Okay, so you've picked up your chainsaw, and it just will not start. What do we do? First of all, has the engine got any compression? That's that bounciness as we pull the recoil cord there. And we need that in order for the engine to work correctly. A lack of this may indicate excessive wear on the engine, and we may not ever get it running correctly. It might be a trip to the repair center because it's not a quick easy fix. But if there is plenty of compression there, but the chainsaw still won't start, then we can look into this a little further. Well, the first thing I would do in this situation is have a good look round the chainsaw itself. I'd have a look if there was any leaks or anything that's hanging off anywhere that I could see just there at the first instance. But let's imagine that's all okay then. And where I'd move on to next is the stop button. Now this might sound very condescending, but I really don't mean it to be. You'd be surprised how many instances, how many people I've known that have left these buttons in the off position by mistake, not realizing, and they couldn't start the engine. And that's been the only cause of the problem. So for what it's worth and the effort it takes to have a quick glance, just to have a second check to make sure this is in the right start position, missing this would make you go into the effort of trying to find something else that's wrong with the machine that isn't wrong at all. It's worth making sure as well that the choke's applied correctly. If after that all's well, then brilliant. But if that's not the case, the spark plug is the next thing I will check. So we'll take this cap off here, this top cover, and that will expose the air filter. And whilst we've got it in our hands, we'll just check that. That looks nice and clear and we'll clean it if not. Whilst we're here at this point, we'll check the HT lead that feeds the spark plug. Make sure there's no tears in it and it's not grounding anywhere. It shouldn't do in short circuiting. And now we need to remove the spark plug to take a good look at it. Once we've removed it, we need to be looking at this point here, right at the top. This is okay. It hasn't got too much carbon on it and it doesn't look damaged and it's not wet with fuel. If it was, that would indicate that the engine is flooding, so too much fuel is going in. And so whilst we're at this point, we need to just test to make sure that the spark plug is working okay. We can do that by placing it back into the spark plug holder like this and then making sure that the end of the spark plug is grounding onto the metal of the barrel. Again, for this, we need to make sure we're in the on position. And then we turn over the engine by pulling the recoil like this and we can see the spark plug sparking, so that's okay. And if it's not sparking, we've probably found the reason it's not starting at all, and so it needs to be replaced. But if that's not the case, then the next thing I would do is check the quality of the fuel and take a look inside the fuel tank. And the best way to do that is to get a little torch and have a look inside there and make sure that the fuel pipe is reaching into the fuel. It's all there and present and no tears in it. And just check that it's clean, no foreign material in there like dirt and crud. And then I would reach in and pull out the fuel filter. We can see there it's attached to the fuel line and it all looks okay. There's no cracks in the fuel line. We can take a better look now it's actually out. I normally take these fuel filters off and check them visually for any dirt and crud. And I also check them for blockages. I clean this end here with a piece of cloth or something like that and then blow through it and that seems okay. And we can generally tell now at this stage whether that fuel inside there has got a, a stale smell or not. If it is stale, then it's best to just tip it away and replace it for what it costs. Of course, if that does it and it's working okay, fantastic. But if we're back to this point again, then we need to go a little further. I just get myself a torch and have a look down there at the choke butterfly. And I'll just make sure all around is looking okay, that the choke butterfly as well is in a good state of repair. And what I normally do now is I'll pull the choke, pushing it in and out there. It's operating it via the linkage very well indeed. So there's no issues there. And so if the choke butterfly and the lever weren't working together this well, then it could cause starting problems as a result of that. And now it's a very good idea to have a look down the sides here at the fuel pipes and all the linkages to have a look to see if there's any obvious damage that we can attend to just to be totally thorough. And just make sure the carburetor isn't loose because if it is then it could be drawing in air where it shouldn't do causing the starting problems. So if we've checked all that and we find all is great, brilliant. But if not... Then the next thing I would check is the carburetor adjustment screws. There are actually several reasons why a carburetor would need an adjustment and that can be as simply as if someone else has borrowed the machine and tried to adjust it themselves and they've adjusted it wrongly a little. I've, I've known that to happen quite a lot. Also, when we use different fuels and different mixes of fuel, that can sometimes have an effect. 
and we just need to tweak the engine slightly particularly if fuel was going slightly stale so that combustibility wasn't quite so good so making any adjustments in those situations can mean that when we actually do put decent fuel in next time then it won't run quite so well until that is the carburetor has been adjusted for the new fuel this issue can have a big impact on starting problems with these types of machines as before if that works great absolutely fantastic but again if not then the last thing I would probably remove to examine is the exhaust in order for me to have a look inside the exhaust and just behind it into the manifold there's just a couple of nuts on here and a couple of bolts on this one but what I'd be looking for is carbon buildup and damage to the engine and so just behind the exhaust here we can see where the manifold is there we can see the piston so we can actually see inside the engine and taking a look at the back of the exhaust there we can see there isn't any carbon buildup there if we take a closer look now at the chainsaw exhaust what we'll see on the exit there for the exhaust fumes is this structure here this is the exhaust spark arrester and it's a metal screen type structure made in a crisscross effect like this and so the exhaust fumes pass through this on the way out of the exhaust but as they do so they obviously filter out the sparks coming from the exhaust which is a good thing the problem is though as the exhaust fumes are passing through this all the time over time this can clog up with carbon carbon and soot particularly if the engine is running a little rich and it's a little smoky but these can generally be removed and replaced but I do know some people in the trade have had some success cleaning these using a blowtorch to burn away the carbon and they're not all flat screens like this there are some types like this which are a bit more of a barrel shape and of course when they clog up they look more like this so we've got these main two types here but the reason that they relate to the engine bogging down is that when these screens get clogged up the exhaust fuel fumes can't get out of the exhaust properly and that allows a buildup of exhaust fumes inside the engine that can't escape and of course if we've got a buildup of exhaust fumes in there combustion cannot take place properly it interferes with that air to fuel mixture and the whole combustion process and this is a problem that's quite common in these types of exhausts and so in my opinion this is either a case of replacing this screen filter or cleaning it and just taking a closer look back here at the piston and inside the engine we can see there that the piston itself looks like it's in a good state of repair there's no major score marks or any evidence of wearing and overheating in there so that looks okay to me but if there is any evidence of damage inside here then it needs to go to a repair center it's far more than what can be done at home that's if the machine's worth repairing because sometimes the cost of doing so can be worth more than the machine itself and to make things a little clearer here if we show you a piston and this is normal it's a good one and there's no damage on this and then we'll show you one here to the right which is scored so you can see the differences in the two you can see in the scored one there that there are lines going down where there's been metal transfer between the piston itself and the barrel because it's got too hot so this is completely damaged and the engine will not run like this this is extremely scored there is a level of scoring much less than this which would result in the engine not starting as well as I say this is very extreme and so I personally wouldn't go any further than what I've just done in order to just see if we can rectify something at home. I would just like to credit the Repair Specialist channel for supplying this video and a link to that channel is down in the description below. The link will take you through to the channel where you'll find specialist advice on repairs and maintenance of garden machinery along with great simplified explanations to give a better understanding of the topic. Well worth a visit.